In this tutorial, we'll talk about how you can standardize the number of cells in a solution based on optical density. And initially, when you make such a graph, you have to compare one set of dilutions, monitoring the OD for each dilution, and at the same time, determine how many cells are in that dilution. Once you do that, you can always go back and just use optical density as your reference. In the laboratory, the first thing you did was you made serial dilutions. You took the cells, and this could be a culture of yeast cells, it could be um, plant cells, alga, it could be bacterial cells, and you did serial dilutions. In this example, we're showing 100 microliters from tube 1 into a known volume, in this case 900 microliters into tube 2. But often these are 1 mil and 9 mil of diluent. So you can vary the volume of the dilutions and the ratios are still the same. In this case, we go from an undilute culture to 10 to the minus 1 all the way up to 10 to the minus 7. In the laboratory, you took the dilutions that you made of the yeast cells and you did two things with them. One thing that you did was you did a spot plate. You transferred three microliters from each tube onto a YPD plate, which is yeast extract, peptone, and dextrose, and that will support the growth of yeast cells. You waited until um, you had colonies, visible colonies on this plate, and each colony arose from a viable cell. The second thing that you did from each of those dilutions was you took uh, a one mil aliquot from each tube, transferred it into a cuvette and read the OD, optical density or absorb absorbance at 600 nanometers. That's the wavelength that we typically use for cells because cells are large enough that they scatter light. And then you repeated that measurement for each of the dilution tubes that you did. Your data might have looked something like this. The first results you'll get will be the yeast OD because that's an immediate result. Here's dilution 1, here's 10 to the minus 1, etc. And we're just showing those dilutions written out as decimals instead of in scientific no notation. And the ODs might have been something like OD of 3 all the way down to a reading that you cannot even detect at this um, very high dilution. If you graph those data, they would look something like this. We would um, put dilution on the horizontal axis and we would plot the absorbance on the vertical axis um, going up to, here's our top value, 3.0. Now, of course, this plot doesn't take into account the results that you're getting from the spot plate assay. So we want to look uh, for the remainder of this tutorial on how you factor in both the absorbance data and the data from your spot plates. Well, several days after you took the absorbance readings, the OD readings, you would be able to look at your spot plates and get results that look something like this. And of course, here is um, your most concentrated sample, and you can see that you have a really a lawn of growth on that spot. But at the higher dilutions, you can actually see individual colonies, and of course, each one of those colonies arose from a single cell. So you can actually count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven colonies at this particular dilution. And you can use that information to extrapolate how many cells, viable cells per mil there were in that sample. Now you can look at all of the results together. Here are all of our original dilutions, the OD readings that you got for each dilution, and then now we're going to factor in the number of cells that grew at each of those dilutions. And we're going to look at how you graph both of these data sets against dilution on a single graph.
first we're going to select the data for yeast OD and cell number. And we're not going to select the titles. The area that's boxed in green is the information that we're going to select. And then we're going to go up to Insert. So on the top of your Excel, um, and if you're using another spreadsheet, that should be not a problem. You'll just have to find out what they call it. And this will look a little bit different if you're working on a PC, but generally there are a lot of tutorials that will help you figure out how to use your specific program. Um, but we go up to Insert, and we're over here in Charts. There's recommended charts, but I'm actually picking this one. It's highlighted, and I'm going to select line with markers. This is what the graph uh, looks like after I get it, and you'll notice that all it's giving me is series one and series two. Um, the horizontal axis is not correct at this point, so we're going to have to go back and tweak this quite a bit. The first thing that we're going to do is actually click on the graph and then using your command or control key and a right click, you will get this window and what you want to do is select data. That's how we're going to be able to go in and manipulate series one and series two and we'll be able to change the um, x-axis. Here's the window that I get after I hit that select data. So here's series one and series two. We're going to ignore those for now. We want to select the horizontal axis and we actually want to select the data that we want the software to use for the horizontal axis because I didn't select that in the first place. Um, there are ways that you could do it all more simply in one fell swoop, but I want to show you how you can go in and change things um, one bit at a time. And then you're gonna, we're gonna, after we select that, we're gonna select this button. We're going to um, go and actually highlight the dilution series that we want to be the data that's used for that horizontal axis. Those numbers will now show up here. You can see that we've got A, two through A9, that corresponds to A2 through nine over here. So it now knows what data um, we should use as a reference for the yeast OD and the cell number. And then we're gonna hit okay. And now you'll see that you have your dilution series showing up at the bottom properly instead of one, two, three, four, up to eight. So that's what you want. And now we're going to select, the blue line is selected here, series one is selected. And we're going back into the select data file and we're going to now put that on a second axis. So when we're in that um, option over here in format, we get something, a screen that appears in Excel is called Format Data Series. And you're going to want to pick the chart uh, logo over here. And we're going to, in this case, select Secondary Axis. So remember, we've selected this blue line, Series 1, that was the OD. And we've selected this. We're in Format, and we're going to pick Secondary Axis. Okay, the secondary axis now appears. And notice that blue line, which used to be way down here, now actually pops up and it has some real meaning for us. Okay, we're gonna do a couple of other manipulations now because if you look at the series two, which was our um, viable cell counts, we've got numbers here that go from zero to I don't know, like five million or something right away. So we've got to convert this into something more meaningful. We're going to make that a log plot. To change that axis to a log scale, 
that's more typically used when you're working with large numbers of organisms. We're going to select that column of numbers and then when that is selected you can use your command or control and a right click and you'll get this type of screen again and this time you'll see format axis and when you click on that you'll be able to make changes um, to this particular axis. Here's the format axis screen and we're working with this vertical, the primary vertical axis and what we want to select, it's already selected here, is logarithmic scale um, the default will be base 10 and if you look um, down a little bit farther you'll see that you can also change the number, the way the numbers are going to be displayed. And In this case we want scientific numbers and the format for that is shown down here um, 0, E and uh, we'll have a number following that E and the E stands for exponent in this case. So once we select those, our um, graph, our axis will shift, of course, um, the numbers on that axis so that we've got 1 e to the 0, um, you know, all the way up to 1 e to the 8. And of course, that's also going to change the way our data, um, how that graph looks, because when you plot numbers like this on a log scale, um, we're going to go from being this sharp curve that it was, looking similar to this, to a straight line. Now we want to go back and add some proper labels. So again, you can select the data source by clicking in your graph and doing a command or a control right click, and you will get this selecting um, data source screen again. And now we're going to highlight series one and over in this box, which is currently empty, we're going to type the name that we want to be associated with the legend for series one because series one is not meaningful to anyone. You need to tell them what they're looking at. And then we're going to hit, we're going to type that in and hit OK. I labeled series one um, OD 600 nanometers and now we're going to do the same thing for series 2. We simply select series 2 and type the name in and hit OK. Now you'll notice that here's my graph and it's up to date. We've uh, labeled series um, as OD 600 nanometers or yeast viable cell numbers and we have um, all of our axes are uh, proper, properly numbered, but they aren't labeled. So now we're going to go back to um, chart design. Notice up here, chart design option. And over here in our chart, we have an, many options for legend, trend line, data labels, which you may or may want to use, but we're going to work on axis titles at this point. And I'm going to work on the primary horizontal axis, um, primary vertical, and the secondary vertical so that um, anyone can look at my graph and know exactly what's represented by the numbers on each of those axes. First I add the label to the x-axis. So I've added dilution down here and I want to point out that when you've highlighted it it'll have um, a little box around it and you can manipulate it at that point. You can make the font larger, you can make it bold which is very nice because it's a little bit easier to see. And then we can go on and add our um, vertical axes. So we've got viable cell numbers here and OD 600 here. And I want you to notice that in between the last two slides, I did another 
change, and that is I changed the color of the lines. And that's because um, I wanted to use red um, as, a, as a theme for yeast viable cell numbers because I'm going to use those that color scheme in another figure later on, and I wanted to establish that now so that it's easier for the audience to track that we're, whenever we see a red line, we're always talking about yeast viable cell numbers. And the way that we do that is, again, by clicking someplace inside your graph and right-clicking, and you'll get a format data series again. And notice there are little icons at the top. You've seen the graph icon before. Here's the paintbrush icon, or the paint can icon. And you can select marker or line. In this case, marker is selected. And instead of automatic, I changed it to built-in. That allows me to change the style of the symbol. Um, so instead of a circle, I changed it to this triangle shape. You can also change the size. And you can um, change the fill. You can change the color. So I selected a green color here. If you're going to change the color of the marker, you should probably also go back and change the line color so that it matches. Um, a final note on when I'm working with formatting the chart area, um, and that then I would actually click outside the chart itself, I usually select no line on the border because when I um, save this as a picture that I'm going to put into a paper or a report, I don't want that extra line around the outside. One of the limitations of using 1 to 10 dilutions, as we did in this exercise, is that you really don't get very good data points for the OD. So notice that we only really have two good data points to correlate OD with cell numbers. So what scientists typically do is they want to get more resolution in this region, and they will use a 1 to 2 dilution. So I'm going to show you what that looks like on the next slide. So now we're looking at data from yeast cells, OD, and viable counts. And in this case, we went with a 1 to 2 dilution, and that's shown down here. So we've changed the dilution axis. And now we're looking at um, a more narrow range. So we've got 1 times 10 to the 9. Actually, we're up here a little less than that, of course, down to about 1 times 10 to the 5. So we've, we've cut that whole vertical axis in half in terms of the number of cell numbers that we're looking at, and we're comparing that now to OD over here. And one of the things that you notice is that we've now got many more data points for OD, and this is a much more reasonable slope, so we can use that to make a much tighter correlation between OD and viable cell numbers. And, for example, we can look first at uh, something that has an OD of about, let's say, 1.1 here. And we can extrapolate over to where that intersects our green line, which is the OD. And then we can go up from there to see where that point, that same point, intersects on viable cell numbers and finally use that to look at the vertical axis on the left to see how many cell numbers that would correspond to. And we're between 10 to the 8 and 10 to the 7, so I'm going to guesstimate on this particular graph that that looks like about 3 times 10 to the 7 cells per mil corresponding to an OD of about 1.15 maybe. So that's how you would use this type of graph. And in the future, you just have to measure OD, and you can get a pretty good estimate in a tight range of what your cell numbers are in a population. One final note is that in this comparison, we're looking at OD, 
and we're comparing that to viable cell numbers that are based on a spot plate assay. In, in the future, when you measure OD, the OD measures the scattering of cells, and it will detect both living and dead cells. So there will be times when you may have dead cells in your population, and when you calculate the number of cells, because it's based on this viable cell count that you initially generated, you could have an Im imprecise measure of the number of viable cells if you have a significant number of dead cells in your population.